So we're here today for a very good cause, a cause that David Axelrod captured beautifully in the film that Susan introduced, a cause that has affected their lives and the lives of a lot of the people who are attending tonight because of a connection with someone who has suffered with epilepsy. And we're grateful that Ram would subject himself to this roast in order to raise money for such a worthy cause. You know, Ram and I have been through a lot together. Now, there's a word that my family always used when I was growing up to describe the relationship you have with someone who has shared triumph and hardship with you. That's the word we used in the Rodham household in Park Ridge, Illinois. The word was mishpukka. <laughs> so, Ram, we're lucky to have you as part of our family. Bill and I cherish you as someone who we count on and just absolutely adore. It's been a pleasure watching your success. It's an honor to call you a colleague. And one thing that I've learned from my long friendship with you is I would never bet against you. I think that we just may be seeing a, an earthquake of an election in 06. And if it happens, it'll be because in large measure, Rahm Emanuel is there with the energy, the focus, the determination on behalf of our country to take back the House on behalf of the Democratic Party. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Uh, I say we just call it a night, guys. What do you say? Um, but no, uh, there, there is a reason that Rom has sat through all of this abuse. Uh, and it's not to get back at us. It is because he cares so deeply about Susan, about David, about 2.3 million Americans living with epilepsy. And so now it's only fair that we let Rahm get the last licks and the last kicks. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest of honor, Rahm Emanuel. I've always said that there's nothing uh, more important in life than good friends. And after tonight, I wish I had some. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about this. Tom DeLay hooks up with the foundation. He gets a golf trip, golf trip to Scotland with Jack Abramoff. I hook up with the foundation and I get this dinner. <laughs> no wonder they're in the majority. Uh, but I know it could have been worse. I'm told the speaker actually suggested a firing squad, not a roast. Hey, if I wanted this kind of criticism, I could have stayed home. <laughs> but to my wife, Amy, who's here, I want you all to know this is her, actually her second trip since being sworn in, uh, in three years here. Usually I say, hey, honey, I got a bill on the floor, we got a big evening, I would love you to come out. She says, hey, Zach's got swim meet, Lion's got, you know, soccer. I said, honey, they're going to roast me tonight. When can I get there? <laughs> In fact, I'm going to tell you this. There was turbulence. They were saying the flight may delay. Chartered a flight. Right here. <laughs> Honest to God, Zach's got 101. Doesn't care. <laughs> right here. The other night, we're watching news. Sunday night news. I might maybe reveal a little too much of the honesty of these criticisms tonight. She's doing the crossword puzzle. We're just kind of watching the news Sunday night. So I said, hey, what did you think? She goes, about what? I said, hey, I was on the news. What did you think of what I said? She goes, you were? So I want you to know, I come to Washington for positive reinforcement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave one other thing out here. <laughs> but I want you to know, I look out, I see a look around this room, and I see some people I love most in the world, donors. <laughs> Known here in Washington as friends. Uh, no, seriously, people who spoke 
are my friends, I know that's hard to believe, and I want to express my friendship in return. They say it is a tradition for the person being roasted to show he's a good sport by making fun of himself. Folks, that tradition stops tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so where do I start? I'll just start with that junior senator from Illinois. <laughs> my good friend, Barack Obama. What a compelling figure. Brilliant, handsome, a winning smile. Michelle, what a beautiful wife. The kids. Of course, everyone in politics envies Barack's ability to peel across partisan lines, sending the right signals to everyone. You know, I don't know if you know this, but Barack's name actually comes from the Hebrew word Baruch, which means blessed. And after you get an opponent like Alan Keyes, who would doubt it? <laughs> You know, after the Hurricane Katrina, a lot of politicians went to see the floodwaters and to view them. Barack went down to walk on it. <laughs> I want to thank you, Barack, for being here and joining us mere mortals tonight. <laughs> now, Barack did say, and I want you to know I was there, he said, I will not run for president in four years. But he said nothing about three years, two months, and 11 days. <laughs> To my friend, Senator Dodd, one of the most inspiring men I've ever known, the ultimate optimist. If you don't believe me, consider the fact that he began his career in Congress during the Ford administration and just had his first two kids. Now that's a definition of an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say this as a father of three kids. Chris is the only dad I know who goes shopping at the Baby Gap and flashes his AARP card for discounts. <laughs> Jackie actually asked the kids to help Chris get off the floor when he's rolling around. <laughs> it was only a few years ago that Chris and his wife Jackie decided to plunge and welcome children into the world. It was really an exciting time for Chris. And he got a number of phone calls from well-known friends. In fact, Strom Thurmond walked up to him on the floor and said, hey, what's the rush? <laughs> Many people close to Chris, myself, asked him to run for president in 2004. Chris called the meeting of his closest advisors. Everyone in the bar thought he should do it. <laughs> Tom Cole. Used to refer to him as my colleague. <laughs> what a stand-up guy to come here tonight, knowing that I'm the most unpopular guy in his caucus. And given what a forgiving bunch they are, Tom, they're holding a spot for you on the ticket next year. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Tom. He asked, and Sherrod Bollard said this in his note, and this is a true point. Sherrod said, I can't make the roast, but if there's a fry, I'll be there. <laughs> the good news is that we've saved a slot for Tom in a witness protection program. <laughs> but you're not alone, Tom. As you know, Bill Sapphire's here. Before his long, distinguished career as a columnist, Bill worked for Richard Nixon which I guess makes him among Republicans today a liberal. <laughs> I mean, look, when you think about it, look at Bill Sapphire's career. Worked in the Nixon administration as a speechwriter. Worked at the New York Times as a leading columnist. Now at the Dana-Farber Institute for the Mind. And still working hard, of course, he has to. Under President's Social Security plan, he has to do that. <laughs> you know, when I was in the White House, I got to work on something that was very dear to me, my father, my mother, and my brothers. And that was that extraordinary handshake on the South Lawn between Arafat and Rabin. And I feel like we really pulled something off really big that night. But getting Bill Sapphire and Hillary Clinton here today, I think I just outdid myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know, Jewish matchmakers around America just eat your heart out for what we did here. <laughs> don't you see the love, the affection? It's palpable to me. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout my years at the White House, Hillary was always there to extend a hand. Unfortunately, in my case, it was off in the back of her hand. <laughs> Hillary and I go way back. I've known her for at least 15 or 16 hairstyles. 
<laughs> I try to edit that, Hillary. I don't know why they made me put it in there. But I want to dispel one myth about Hillary Clinton. She does not spend a lot of time on her hair when you take John Edwards into consideration. <laughs> now, Hillary, I'm just going to say this. You said mishpucha like somebody from Park Ridge. So. <laughs> And for all the non-Jews, mishpucha is family or another way of, well, we'll just leave it at that. It's family. You know, and when I...